but the things that are going on in Washington are going to direct, some of those things are going to directly affect what will happen in the General Assembly. The reason that's so important to me is, just as I mentioned to you, I think that what, what has to be the position of the delegate in Richmond is one of integrity, one of consistency, one of reliability, and somebody that you can, that you can know where they stand. If you read that, that palm card and you go to the website, I've said you can call me or email me. I will answer any question that you want about any issue. And that's exactly how I'll represent you in Richmond. Very simple. Just call me. We'll talk about it. I'll explain where I am and we'll do the right thing. Tax increases are not an option. Now, if it's any clearer, if it needs to be any clearer, I'll say it again. Tax increases are not an option. What we need to do is we need to look at the budget. If the money's not there, things get cut. Bob McDonald, Republican candidate for governor, has stated he would be willing to take, I believe the number was over $4 billion out of education to help pay for transportation. Is that something you and Ms. Waste and Ms. Mason um, both are willing to vote for? So if he says he's going to take it from education, then, then we're probably going to have a problem and a difference of opinion. I will tell you that, that my priority, one of the highest priorities that I have is education. And I think one of the most important things is, is maintaining the, the education system that we have in the public system and also maintaining the availability of other choices for parents, whether that's homeschooling or private institutions. And uh, of course, I have the honor of serving on Roanoke City Council um, and have been on council for three years. And that's a reflection uh, two things. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, made it clear that it was very important for us as children and for our family to be involved in our community and to give back and to be engaged as a citizen and to read the newspaper and keep up with public events. So when, um, after a career with the Department of the Interior, my husband's job, Billy, is a, uh, his job brought us to Roanoke nine years ago, having to sit on that dais as a member of council and realized the funding that was coming from Richmond was going to be inadequate and that we as city officials weren't going to have the revenue to make the difference <coughs> underscore to me the importance of what happens in Richmond. How do you feel about um, encouraging offices to save money in their budgets but not you know, to punish them for saving money? Is there, do you have any ideas on ways to encourage saving money so that we can um, you know, meet some of these shortfalls that we're having. I speak from a city perspective, but it'd be an interesting question to, to learn about at the state level. And particularly, we were prone to this prior to, to the city manager, Darling Birch and Company, where um, you'd see these sort of spending sprees on the part of libraries or um, schools at the end of the year. What, what we did was start um, a savings program, if you will, uh, so that we automatically kind of budgeted for expenses by saving carefully within each department so that you eliminated <coughs> that sort of holding off until the bitter end. And we have a much better um, tracking system and accountability to make sure that funds are expended wisely and you don't have that big bump uh, starting you know, June 20th until the fiscal year ends. And that's just, again, from a city perspective. I appreciate the question. 